Today, we're going to make this rock rotate using a material, and we'll also rotate stone particles around it. Press Ctrl plus N to create a new level. Select Basic. Select the directional light and rotate it to get a sunset-like mood. But you'll notice it keeps getting brighter, right? Go to Project Settings and disable Auto Exposure. This way, you can get a darker sunset atmosphere. Now, let's save the level. I've already downloaded the asset in advance, and we'll use this rock. This rock is available for free. If you search for Paragon, you'll find environment files. These are free assets provided by Epic, so I downloaded them. Now let's place this rock into the level. It felt a bit too dark, so I adjusted the rotation of the directional light slightly. Next, open the rock mesh. We're going to add rotation through its material, so let's go inside the material. Please go into the parent material. You'll see something called world position offset here. We'll add nodes here to apply rotation. Let's name it Rotate Axis. This node defines the axis of rotation. We're going to rotate around the Z axis. Now, bring out the Rotate About Axis node. Connect it to the axis. For the rotation angle, multiply time and a speed value, and plug that into the angle input. This way, the rotation is driven over time. For the pivot point, we'll use the object pivot, so connect the object pivot point node. For the position, we want to rotate based on world coordinates, so connect the world position node. If you check now, you'll see it rotating. But something looks a bit off, right? When using this node, the normals don't update correctly, so we need to fix that. Bring out the Rotate About Axis Normals node. Take the node that was originally connected to Normal, add it together with the new node using an Add node, and plug the result back into Normal. You'll see an error at first. That's because we haven't defined the rotation axis and angle yet. So, connect the axis and the rotation angle here as well. Once you do that, the error disappears. Save it, and now it should look correct. Now let's add particles around this object. Create a Niagara system and select Hanging Particle. Remove any unnecessary modules. Change the location shape to Torus. Set the radius to 400 and the handle radius to 5. Set the simulation target to GPU. Go to Initialize Particle and slightly increase the particle size. You'll see it forming a ring shape. Let's place it together with the rock in the viewport. Since the particles need to rotate around the rock, add a Vortex Force module. Set the value to 1000. Also add a drag module and set its value to 4. Add a curl noise force module and increase the noise strength. Also rotate the noise itself using panning. The particles start spreading outward a bit, so increase the full amount value in the vortex force module. Now let's add a material to these particles so they look like rocks. Create a new material. Set the blend mode to masked. Lighting is set to default lighting, but if it's too heavy, you can switch to unlit. It won't receive lighting and will be cheaper to render. I've brought in some rock textures that were prepared in advance. Since this is a PNG file, connect the background alpha to the opacity mask, and it will look like this. Now, to control the color from Niagara, bring out a particle color node, multiply it with the rock's RGB, and plug it into emissive color.
We'll randomize the color values, bring out a dynamic parameter node, name the parameter emissive, and multiply it in before connecting to emissive color. The rock color looks a bit too bright, so multiply it by 0.5 to darken it slightly. Now the material is finished. Go to the Niagara renderer and assign this rock material in the material slot. Since this is a texture sequence, it looks like this. In the renderer's sub-UV settings, enter the number of frames. It's a 2x2 two two layout, so set it accordingly. Right now, only the image in the first frame is visible, so add a sub-UV animation module in Particle Spawn. Set sub-UV animation to random and set end frame to 3. There are four images in total, so this will randomize them correctly. Now create a dynamic material parameter. Set a red value in the scale color. You'll see that all the rocks turn red. If you set emissive to random in the dynamic material parameter, the emissive value will be applied randomly. The red feels a bit weak, so I'll increase the value. There are too many spawned rocks, so I'll reduce the spawn count and slightly reduce the torus radius as well. The handle radius also feels too large, so I'll reduce it to 1. From here on, we're just adjusting values to make it look nicer. I made a few more adjustments. Right now, the rock is rotating on the z-axis, but if you change the axis value, you can rotate it on a different axis. If you rotate the Niagara particles as well, you'll see their rotation direction change. If this doesn't work, make sure local space is checked in the Niagara emitter. Finally, to make it look even better, I duplicated the emitter and added smaller rocks. To make it feel more irregular, I further adjusted the noise rotation values in the curl noise force. There were still too many particles, so I reduced the lifetime to lower the overall particle count. And that's it. Thank you for watching my content today.